There is a saying we have, damned if you do and damned if you don't. I think we've got to be very, very careful that we don't end up lambasting the freest and most generous countries. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be checking out a video from Douglas Murray titled Douglas Murray Shut Up Muslim Girl and Dismantle a Case in a Heated Immigration Debate. Wow, I believe this is going to be an interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. You're about to watch Douglas Murray address an accusation thrown against Europe and by extension white people that what they do for Africa boils down to a white saviour complex. Now that's pretty shocking, isn't it? In a debate that happened years ago in Doha, the floor was opened for the audience to ask questions. One of them, a Muslim lady named Asma from Kenya, turned to Douglas and said, And do you think it's judicious for these people in Britain? For example, you talked about how Britain is giving aid to these countries in Africa. It's judicious for them to give this much money to these countries, but without even listening to their needs. So this only contributes to the white saviour complex yeah. that is currently a big issue in okay. Before we get into Douglas's epic response, let me quickly jump in and define what white saviour complex means, seeing that's an epithet that's being thrown around a lot these days. The term refers to white people helping black people only to look like white saviours. The suggestion is that the helper only wants to feel good about his good deeds and does not care about the person whom he is assisting at all. Now, here is how Douglas responded to this sort of accusation. He, straight up, wasn't having any of it. Well, there is, there is a saying we have, damned if you do and damned if you don't. If it's the case that if we don't give aid, we'd be accused of not giving aid, and if we do give aid, it's a white saviour complex. I mean but then, Douglas conceded to one thing. We can all give aid better, for sure, and I just gave in my opening remarks what I think was a, a serious suggestion for one very good use of aid, which is to prioritise it in the region and in the neighbouring countries of people, places people are fleeing from. But, I mean, as I say, I, I, I would refuse as well to see the multifarious problems that exist in, in your own home country and sadly across the continent of Africa. Back to Douglas in a sec. Why was the lady so quick to point fingers at Europe's magnanimity for the myriads of problems plaguing her country and, by extension, the continent of Africa? Are we to be blamed for the current political instabilities, bad governments and tribal wars happening in these places? Before we proceed, kindly hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos on Douglas Murray's provocative debates. Next, another person in the audience claims that the main reason migrants are moving to Europe is because wealth is moving out of the developing world in form of debt repayment to the developed world. Here's how Douglas responded to that. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, again, I repeat the fact there are no simple answers. And if it was simply the fact that you could, I don't know, do a debt default or something and solve the whole migration issue, then, then that would be great. But it just isn't the case. Now watch as Douglas hits the nail at the head with these rhetorical questions. You think that if, if, uh, if um, for instance, all uh, African countries were allowed to default on debt, that they'd become uh, uh, um, burgeoning, uh, flourishing uh, 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 societies? You think that the problem across for instance, sub-Saharan Africa, isn't just unbelievable greed and theft by politician after politician, you think? There you have it. But Douglas wasn't quite done. You think that, that, that if you just wrote off the debt, that would stop being an issue and everyone would become transparent and clean in their dealings with money? I mean, the problems are much deeper than this. They're much deeper than just a, a simple solution like that. As Granted, historically, Europe colonised foreign countries for reasons ranging from persecution in their own countries to the search for riches and economic benefits. But then, it is really easy to simplify and accept biased information instead of being open-minded. It's quite untrue to believe that European countries were the only ones to conquer and colonise others. Every region has done similar atrocities against others if you go back in time far enough. But that's by the way. Now. One of the debaters sitting across from Douglas, another anti-Europe activist, made a point which drew a resounding applause from the crowd. Something um, we call, that we we call brown end. people migrants, we call white people who go abroad to work expats. This is really important. <laughs> right. However, Douglas, as if he had prepared ahead of time for her point, 
gave a response that was both fitting and truthful. Firstly, by the way, migrants versus expats, there's a very clear reason. It's expected, rightly or wrongly, that expats don't stay in the country and bring up their families and stay for generations. The assumption with migrants is, currently has been in recent generations, that they are going to stay and that it's going to be a multi-generational thing. That's Personally, I think calling these people refugees is according them respect that they do not deserve. In reality, most of them are actually callous invaders. Whereas some refugees may intend to leave for home as soon as possible, invaders intend to stay and take over. So the present group of refugees certainly belongs to the latter, and hopes of integration are misplaced since they won't, as we can see in the Turks in Germany and the Maghreb refugees in France. No multicultural society in history ever survived for long, and typically ended up with one group massacring the other as the most recent example of Hutus and Tutsis in Rwanda showed us. To expect otherwise is sheer arrogance or simply insanity. Next, Douglas turns to everyone on stage, throwing shade at Europeans, and asks a question that leaves the whole audience speechless. I think we've got to be very, very careful that we don't end up lambasting the freest and most generous countries. And I would just urge, as a call to, as it were, moral caution on this, urge you in this room and people watching, how many people have you made uh, citizens of Qatar from Syria? How many? Okay. You could have heard a pin drop in the room. Now, the truth of the matter is that Europeans are pacifists. We are, generally speaking, liberals in our thinking. This is why we assume that everyone is as kind, respectful and educated as we are, because we all have our heads in the sand and can't face the reality that we opened our borders to our enemies. I mean, the same people from the East and South we give money to actually hate us and our culture. I mean, let's face it, Islam hates Western liberal culture. They consider the West degenerate and pornographic, but it's too late to stop them from coming since they are already here. Worse still, many of them now have voting rights. That's game over. Now, guys, it's high time we all stood up and demand a change. What are your thoughts on this? Should Europe continue to accept so many refugees? Let us know what you think in the comments section. Wow, what an interesting video. And I've really learned a lot just by uh, watching this video. We can all tell uh, Douglas Murray is someone that is very articulated, is very sincere, is very honest, is not afraid to say the truth. We always stand for the truth. And I believe uh, the lady who asked the question, she's not, uh, she's not sincere. And the question she asks uh, is more like an insult. Uh, I believe... Uh, the whites trying to help blacks by offering loan to them. I don't see any wrong in that. And she tried to make it look like uh, the whites are trying to uh, are trying to do it in order to uh, to feel good, in order to believe uh, they are good. And I feel that is totally wrong. That is totally wrong. Someone uh, offering a helping hand to you in order to be able to uh, better your country. I don't see any wrong in that. So if you get uh, get loan, it's left for you to decide on how to manage the loan, on how to use the loan in order to be able to uh, develop your country. And I think I would also like to appreciate uh, the whites because it's not easy. It's not easy. And I see that the lady asking uh, this type of question, I don't think uh, she's in her right senses. Uh, forgive me, I believe uh, she has been uh, indoctrinated into stupidity. How can you ask such a question that uh, the white are trying to uh, offer loan to Africa in order to feel good, in order to uh, in order to feel good? Why is they are the one offering? Uh, they are the one offering the app, trying to help help you by offering you loan, and at the end of the day, you are you are you are you are you are, uh, you are accusing them that they are trying to look good. That's why they are helping you. That they are not listening to the need of Africa. Instead, they are giving Africa a loan. I believe the whites offering uh, uh, a helping hand to the blacks. I don't see any. I don't see anything bad in that. So, and I believe we as Africans, uh, we always try to find who to blame for our problem. But I believe it's high time we start holding. Uh, we start holding ourselves accountable for our action. Uh, we start holding ourselves accountable for our action. We don't need to blame the white. We don't need to always blame the white for our problem. Uh, I think it's left for us 
to be uh, it's left for us to be able to build our country. It's not uh, the white responsibility to uh, come and build our own country. I believe uh, the blacks we have the responsibility of building our country. We don't have to blame the white for our problem. We don't have to blame the white because they are offering a helping hand to us. Just like I say, I believe the lady who asked this question have been indoctrinated into stupidity. How can you ask such a question? How can you blame the white for our problem? We all know that uh, uh, 200 years ago, uh, the, the, the whites, uh, they colonized uh, a lot of African countries, a lot of African countries, but that is in the past. That is in the past. We have gone past that. Can you tell me that uh, from 200 years, 200 years ago uh, to this point, uh, to this point, we still have to, uh, uh, we still have to be blaming the white for our own problem. I think that is totally wrong. That is totally unacceptable. Africa has to be accountable for their own action. And you getting you getting a loan from uh, from America, from UK, from Europe, from United Nations, and all that is left for you to uh, be able to use the loan to develop your country. They, the whites are not going to come and develop your country for you. You are the one that is going to develop your own country. And we don't we don't we don't always we always blame the white for our problem. I see something wrong with that. And you can tell a lot of uh, immigrants uh, are, are going to uh, Europe, are going to uh, the white country uh, in search for greener pasture. And at the end of the day, most of them, they end up uh, making it uh, in whatever they are doing because uh, the whites are, are, are always ready to accommodate them, are always ready to accommodate uh, their behavior. So why are we not blaming the white for our problem? If you even look at countries like UK, they, there has been a lot of chaos recently because of uh, the, the, the mass immigration, uh, because of the mass immigration. And, you know, Douglas Murray always talk about uh, uh, that the major problem facing UK right now is uh, Islamic fundamentalists, Islamic extremism, that they always speak, uh, they always speak offense. And you living in a community, you have no rights not to be offended and you don't need to uh, pick offense, you don't need to resort to violence because someone is trying to express his freedom of speech. So, I think uh, Africans, we don't need to blame the whites for our problem. It's high time we start holding ourselves accountable for our own problem. It's high time we start working to build our nation, to make our nation great. Wow. I've really learned a lot just uh, watching this video. I believe you also do. So, I'll uh, like to hear your comments do you think uh uh the the question the lady asks do you think uh it's reasonable to me i believe uh uh the question uh is, is not it's not reasonable so keep the comments coming don't forget click on the subscribe button click on the like button do have a nice day